Hello and welcome to Victor George Leather Goods Knife Sheath School Volume 6 here on YouTube. And today we are going to build this field worthy pouch sheath featuring a camlock welt style. So I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to build this yourself from the pattern through the fabrication. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Do it. Before we actually jump into the pattern, let me discuss a few of the details. So this is the pattern that we uh, drew for this particular life sheath. I'll show you that in a second. But anyway, it's a basic pouch sheath, uh, similar to what we drew in volume five. The only um, new thing for this video is what I call a camlock welt highlighted in red here. So. The theory of this camlock welt is that the knife, when seated in the sheath and uh, held very snugly, as you can tell by how close the welt is, and the concept is when you draw the knife, the half guard binds on the swollen welt here and once it clears that, it pops out for a quick, crisp release. And reholstering, as you're pushing it in, again, the half guard contacts and binds ever so slightly on that welt and then releases and pops into the sheath with an audible click. So this is what we're gonna show you how to draw today. It is a little bit um, hands-on, uh, not as, um, yeah, we'll, you'll see. It's a little bit more hands-on work, especially when it comes to the swell area. So let's take a look at the sheath. This is the actual sheath built from that pattern, and it's um, nothing more than your basic pouch sheath. I did add an add-on belt loop, two inches. It's blocked and molded. So the significant part of this basic pouch sheath is the welt and that's what we're going to discuss today so let me show you and uh, so when you're placing the knife in it doesn't fall in you have to literally push it in past the cam lock and then it seats into its nestling spot all right on the draw it's the same thing you have to you have to pull on it and then it releases past that cam lock all right what do you say we make one? Go ahead and start the pattern process. And uh, on this one, I use a standard eight and a half by 11 inch piece of uh, cardstock paper. It's folded directly in half. So for this particular knife, and these sheaths work for straight point, slight drop points, um, but they have to have somewhat of a half guard. Doesn't really matter, um, but that is needed for this type of sheath pattern. So we fold the paper in half. I take from the fold area a quarter inch line measurement. That is two things. Number one, that takes into consideration the thickness of the leather. In this case, eight, nine ounce veg tanned um, leather. And that is also where the spine of the knife is placed against that quarter inch line. So once you have that knife placed in the position you want, and um, then you trace it out. And all you really need to trace out is the blade and the half guard and the handle for um, height. So once you have that drawn in there, that is the start of your pattern. So the first thing I need to establish is on my blade edge. And on this case, the blade is to the right for the right hand draw sheath. I'm gonna take and establish a 3 8 inch welt or seam allowance. And you've seen me do this before, so fast forward if you don't wanna see it. I am gonna to go to the area of the half guard. And of course you can use your compass or ruler and measurement. However you get your 3 8 inch welt, that's what's important here. 
I like these graph rulers because they have all the measurements and I can see through it and it gives me the shadow line that I need for the actual build. All right, once you get, once you get to this area here, <coughs> excuse me, once you get to the area here of the, of the half guard, I'm just going to, a little bit wider ruler, I'm just gonna extend this line up into this general area. But to keep everything uh, symmetrical and in proportion, I'm gonna take this ruler and I'm gonna butt it up against this line, and then I'm just gonna make sure that everything else is true. Take a little moment to make sure. Again, the pattern is the most important part of this build. So once we have that, I'm just gonna draw it up to here. Okay, um, an important measurement is right here. So in between the, um, the half guard and this line that we just drew up as an extension of the weld, that is one eighth of an inch wide. Now I'm gonna take this line here and I'm gonna add one half inch for the sheath body, and I'm gonna place that right there. Okay, so that is the, the, the start of your um, weld. Now, the pocket that we're going to draw in here at the half guard is nothing more than just a, a half circle, and you can use a French curve. I just find that the easiest way for me is to draw it in. So I go from the edge of the blade right here, and then I just give a half round circle, and I end it over here somewhere. And that is the half circle. Now we're gonna connect the welt with the end of the uh, knife sheath, and to do that, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, to do that, we're going to connect it with a French curve. And I wanna make sure, so we need a half an inch from this general area out here. And uh, the way I'm going to, to draw this transition is with this. And again, this is totally up to how you wanna do this for shape, but the important again, make sure that you have at least a half an inch there. So let's go ahead and butt that up against the welt and right here. And that gives us our standard flare for a pouch sheath. That is what that's gonna look like on leather. All right, once we have that, um, then I am going to draw in the top of the sheath. You can do that however you want. I'm gonna use my standard Simple little half circle on top. Now it's starting to look like a sheath. Here's where the handsy work uh, comes in on this particular pattern. So again, we have uh, approximately an eighth of an inch in between um, the half guard and this uh, initial welt line that we drew in. And what we have to do is we have to create a slight swell. So from that half guard circle to this area on the welt, we need to add that, um, we need to add that swell. This highlight, this red line here, if you can see it, that was the initial um, line, which is right here. So the way I do this is, I would imagine you can take anything round, um, which will help you draw it, but you want to connect from here to about here on the welt. And to do that, you want to swell this line a little bit. And the way I do that is I just take a flexible ruler and uh, somewhat awkward to manipulate, but just put it where you want it. And then the swell needs to be a hair wider than one eighth of an inch. Okay, and then we're gonna draw this in. And you're gonna draw this swell from the half guard pocket to the edge of the welt like that.
Okay. So this swell right here is where the half guard will bind on its withdrawal, making the cam lock weld. All right, and that is your pattern. Now that we've drawn the pattern for this build and we're satisfied with all our lines and everything looks clean, um, we need to cut this out. And the way I do that is I open the pattern up. I take my utility knife and from the top of the sheath on the actual fold line of the paper, I'm just gonna cut up. Do the same thing on the bottom. Sorry for turning this. Um, again, from the fold line, from the bottom of the sheath, cut down. Now this little area here is where the drain hole is gonna be. Once I have that, then it's nothing more than taking your time and being as accurate as you can. And from the edge of the fold, I'm just gonna cut out my sheath pattern. I'm gonna follow that fog line. And I'll try to be as accurate as I can because the final result um, will be important if you do this correctly. All right, so I'm cutting out the pattern and from the top of the sheath to the fold line. And here's a good opportunity if there's a line that's a little bit crooked or awkward, you can just straighten it out with, with the uh, cutting. So take that now and fold it into itself and trace the pattern onto the back side. All right, so now once we have this, um, I'm going to establish the stitch holes um, on the pattern itself. And uh, let me prep for that and I'll show you how. Right. Before we cut the complete pattern out, um, I need to establish my stitch line indicators on this cam lock welt. Uh, this will make it easier once I transfer this to the leather pattern, which you'll see in a moment. So what I do is I take a five millimeter um, stitching iron, and this is from um, Maker's Leather Supply. Um, you get a four-piece set for around 50, 60 bucks. So I'm going to go in um, in between one-eighth and one-sixteenth of an inch from this edge. We want that weld to sit tight and firm in the knife. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and you can measure this. I have a tendency to just eyeball everything and just start right up along the edge of that welt i'll do a couple here and then i'll show you the result on another pattern and the nice thing about this as it develops Okay, so this is what we want to do. We want to establish those stitch lines approximately that distance from the edge. And we're just going to do the inside on this other pattern here. If that gives you an idea of the shape of the stitch line. Okay, this outside edge here, uh, we'll do that once we actually start cutting it to leather. All right, let's go ahead and uh, now um, finish the stitch line off camera and then I'll cut this pattern out. So we finished uh, marking our holes on the pattern for our stitch line. And uh, this can be a double row of stitching. Um, we'll show you that in the fabrication part, um, much like this uh, old sheath um, or this other style of sheath. These are all cam lock welds. 
So your sheath pattern can be anything you want. If you notice on the actual video build, I stopped right there, um, only because it was getting a little bit tight. But you can have a double row stitch up here and then transfer into a single row down there. Whatever you want to do, this is um, all up to you. Now we have the pattern established with the holes and uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut it out of the pattern itself. So on the mirror side of the sheath, again, very important, split that line because if you do this as accurate as you can, when it comes time to fabricate and sew the main seam of this together, you won't have too much sanding to do. It'll be pretty clean. So take your time. Okay, we have our sheath pattern. I'm satisfied with all the lines and uh, everything is in place where it needs to be. Now let's go ahead and transfer this to our Veg 10 leather. Let's just take a moment and talk about the pattern. Now you'll notice I did not design an integral loop into this build. I am going to be using an add-on and uh, sewing it to the sheath itself. The shape of this um, add-on belt loop is basically, this is what I have come up with through the years. So I'm gonna let you look at that for a second. If you wanted to copy that, um, you're welcome to. It's about uh, five inches in length and one and a half inches wide to about one and a quarter inches with this little in, inside curve here. And uh, it just adds a nice little touch when you're using these style of sheets. All right, enough, let's go. Once you have um, this all set to put on leather, I went ahead and set it on a piece of eight to 10 ounce uh, veg tanned leather. And uh, I taped the pattern down because what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna give myself some um, uh, visual indicators of the stitch line. So all I'm gonna do is take a little all and just give myself a little dot there. I, I'm not piercing it, I'm just giving myself the line that I need eventually to use my stitching irons to replicate this. And you can fast forward through this if you like. Again, we're only doing the inside edge of the welt. And then up to the point there. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit more here on the back side so that I have a general idea of where my belt loop is going to have to be placed so that I'm not setting the belt loop over the area where these stitches will have to be. And you'll see how that plays out here in a little. Cut this out to the same thickness of leather. I went ahead and cut it out, sanded it, make sure it's all flush, edged both sides of it. And then um, I'll show you here in a minute how I measure it to the belt we're gonna use. And uh, we'll press on. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this pattern out. You can do that however you like. I won't bore you with cutting it. The important part is 90 degrees on your um, uh, utility knife or whatever knife that you choose to do, make sure it's 90 degrees and you split the incline. Eventually that incline will be removed with an edger. All right, I'll be back with this parts and pieces all cut out. Next step is to take your whole pattern and transfer it to leather and um, uh, mark your holes on the sheath face and also on the back for your welt. Once you do that, then you cut out the welt and um, you transfer it to a piece of welt leather 
and then you cut the inside of the welt out and leave some excess here on the outside. And the reason for that is it makes it easier to um, help you glue it in place, which we'll do here in a few steps. Once you uh, have your welt pattern cut out, then I take the inside, the flesh side of the sheath, and I will, let's see if my brain will work here, and then I just lay it on there on both sides, and I trace myself an ink line. Uh, I, I use the ink line so that you can see it more. You can use an awl and just give yourself an indicator. These are nothing more than um, uh, placement for the welt. The welt obviously will go on this side. That's the way I do it. And the other side will be the glue line. So once you have all that done, then um, you're ready for fabrication steps. You don't really need the paper pattern anymore. And now you take your belt hanger um, that you cut out as well. You edge top and bottom. I always use a little bit of a decorative line around the edge. And the way I do this now is I'm gonna uh, fold it to the belt itself. And this is nothing more. I take my industrial spray bottle, which gives a really a nice controlled mist uh, from Home Depot, those type of places, little saddle soap and uh, distilled water. And I'm gonna spray this down top and bottom, not really casing it. Um, I'm just giving it some moisture so it becomes malleable. Then I take, um, take whatever belt loop stock that, uh, that you have. I have one here, two inch, uh, down to a one and three quarters. This is gonna be a two inch belt loop. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it down over the belt loop itself. And then I have a little bit of an uh, indication of where I'm gonna start my stitch lines, probably right there and right there. And then also on the back side, I'm gonna end my stitch line right about here. And you'll see how I do that in just a minute. And um, now obviously you can place your maker's mark. You can, um, you know, do, do whatever you want. Of course, you're going to uh, burnish the edges. You can use your Martin's mix, your token all, your wax edges. Um, I use uh, a little bit of uh, saddle soap and a, and a uh, dauber and uh, moisten it and then I burnish it. So that is technically all set to go. And now we have all of this ready. The next step is I'm going to rough this up and I'm gonna glue it to the front of the sheath face like this. Once I get that done, I'll go ahead and come back and show you this. So let me cover a couple of uh, things prior to the step that I had mentioned. So I use a little bit of liquid glycerin saddle soap in a little bowl mixed with some water. And um, then I take it and I um, moisten it and then I burnish it. I then, once it's burnished, I use one of these little um, um, daubers. Again, you can get this at Maker's Leather Supply and then um, dauber your dye onto the edge and burnish it. All right, so once you have that done, then take a piece of glass or a piece of steel and the very tip on the flesh side, you want to just take that really sharp bump off. So basically you feather it to edge like that and um, then she'll be ready now to indicate the stitch marks and your name stamp. Okay, so I'll come back with that done. Also on my sheath face, I went ahead and edged top and bottom. You don't have to worry about edging right here where the welt's gonna go, but all of this um, gets daubered, or I'm sorry, edged. And uh, take your glycerin saddle soap, your token all, your Martin's mix, whatever it is you want to use and get that top part nice and burnished. The liquid glycerin saddle soap, you can use a bar, you can use the liquid form um, 
anyway, get yourself a nice clean edge. Use your dauber if you want, and uh, then we are all set. I also scribed a 1 16th inch line with my wing dividers just to dress it up a little bit. And uh, we are ready for the next step. Let's prep for that. On a few additional preliminary steps, I went ahead and um, um, burnished and dyed the top edge of the sheath. And I finished my belt strap. I got a little bit heavy handed with my stamp, uh, a little crooked with my name stamp, but this is just to show you that you can do whatever you want with these things, okay? So all the holes are uh, pre-punched, either with an awl or drill press. I assume that if you have a sewing machine in your shop, I don't need to explain those steps to you. So again, all of this can be machine sewed. So on the sheath face additionally, I went ahead and took my stitching iron and all of those little holes, let's see, where are they? Anyway, all of those uh, pre-marked little dimples that I put on the sheath face, um, I now went ahead and punched them with my uh, uh, five millimeter uh, stitching iron. Okay, so that's prepped there. We still haven't put on the um, welt yet. I think what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and put on the belt strap. Okay, so I have my little dimples here, my indicators of where I need to put this. So I'm gonna set that down and I'm gonna place it into position so that it's not in the way of these future stitch holes. And uh, a common theme is the top of the belt loop should be approximately halfway mark of the handle, and we'll see how that develops here. But that's a, that's a good industry standard. So I got my positioning. I know where I want it. Now I'm just gonna take um, a pointy awl, and I'm gonna just give myself a little indicator on the other side where I need to establish my glue line. Okay, so right there is my glue line. And of course, I'm going to now scratch this whole area up. I will take um, a little bit of time off camera, do a good job of really giving myself a roughed up area and not past the stitch marks though. And that's also where you're gonna glue. Okay, so I will be back and I will have this top piece mounted in preparation for mounting the bottom part of the strap and then I will rough this up and glue it to this side of the sheath face prior to trimming this. All right, so we'll do that off camera and I'll be back. I went ahead and scratched the surfaces up that uh, I need to glue this back hanger on and I just glued to the stitch lines. Don't glue outside the stitch lines and um, that way you don't get any ooze. And an easy way that I line up my holes is I take these uh, very fine tipped, I found these at Hobby Lobby, actually you can make these with needles pretty easily. So what I do is I take these, and again, this is just to, just to double, doubly ensure that I get right in the spots. And then I just line up the holes with these as guides. Once I have the holes in there, I press it down, and then I know it's exactly where it needs to be. Contact cement. Give it some good shots there, and um, now I'm going to sew that on there. I lightly moisten the leather before I sew. Like I've said, the strong thread of today, I don't use groove um, lines in anything. Once that's sewn down, we'll go ahead and set this down here and uh, establish the same uh, pierce marks, glue, and sew that down. So um, I'll do that and then we'll be back and we'll glue on the welt. Moving right along. So I have sewn the top piece on and the trick to this is making sure that you use a thread size and needle size that fills up the holes. And uh, when you have trimmed off the uh, threads on the inside, 
that's a little detail that you should also pay attention to. And what I do is I take a lighter and I don't actually put the flame to the threads. I, see if I can get you in camera here. I just get the heat close to the threads and then they melt on their own. That way they don't get all black and charred up. And once you do that, then, and as you can see, that fills the threads up um, in the holes and makes a, a nice uh, finish. Okay, so we have this area scratched up. You don't have to worry too much about the flesh side here. And we're gonna replicate that same thing. Again, we're keeping this away from the eventual stitch line here. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and do that off camera and we'll be right back. So we sewed the um, uh, add-on belt loop onto the sheath and I went ahead and tacked the stitches flat once, uh, once they were in position. So another thing that we're gonna do here eventually is we're gonna take our belt loop and we're gonna sort of block the, uh, the loop. We definitely want a good fit on the belt that the person wants and that will be blocked, looped into position. There's no flop or play or sway or anything like that on this high and tight sheet. All right, I went ahead and glued. The only time I color in the lines is when I'm gluing my sheath. So you don't want glue on the inside. I went ahead and double tacked both of these. You don't want any glue on the inside or you don't want any glue on the outside edge either. So I went ahead and finished the inside a little bit and uh, it's all set now for placement. So I'm gonna take this and because we did such a fine job on the pattern and transferred that to the leather, we're gonna have a nice fit and everything's gonna go into position. We have that there and again, get in the habit of tacking down our glue lines and our stitch lines when they're all done. Okay, so I'm gonna push that in a little bit. And, and I think we're coming along very nicely. Okay, I think we're all systems go. All right, I'm gonna let that cure a little bit. And again, use an all your drill press, it doesn't matter. Um, once you get a sewing machine, it's a little bit different of a ball game, especially when you're gonna sew this together because this stitch line is so close to the uh, back hanger. So anyway, I, like I said before, once you have a sewing machine, I'm assuming you have more skills um, than these uh, basic little um, steps that I take. All right, let that cure a little bit. I'm gonna trim this off and then I'm gonna sew the um, main seam together and uh, we're really coming along now. All that's left is edge work on the main seam, edging, burnishing, and finished. Thanks. Okay, we're ready to cut off the excess now and uh, strop your blade occasionally, and then just hold the blade 90 degrees to the edge of the sheath face. And you don't have to cut through all the way on the first pass, just give yourself Just give yourself um, sort of a guideline and uh, on your second or third pass, you should be able to Okay, nice flush edge and that'll make the, the final uh, sanding a lot easier. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double glue, contact cement those, and, um, and then I am going to glue the edges together prior to sewing. And as you can see, we have a nice fit. It's not gonna be a lot of excess um, sanding needed. We have our uh, drain hole there. One thing though that I would like to show you here, and um, let me get the tool real quick.
you're ready to fold the sheath together to sew the main seam, um, w one thing that can happen sometimes is on your leather, if it's really, really uh, heavy temper leather, you're gonna have a hard time folding this. This is a wood grooving tool, an X-Acto blade, and you can just take this and give yourself a little relief. And you can do one or two lines there. I usually do a center line. But uh, most of the time, all you really need to do is moisten the sheath with that spray, and then it'll fold in. So the sheath together is going in very nicely, and um, the welt thickness is going to be just perfect. If, for example, I had a really fat-handled knife, I may have to add another layer of welt here, and I would only add it to this distance, and then this here would be skived to feather to uh, transition into the rest of this welt. So not gonna need that in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and double cement both sides, tack it together, and sew it, and we'll be back. All right, the sheath is finished. We have taken it to 600 grit, hand sanded. We started with a 60 and a 150 flap wheel, and then the rest has been hand sanded to this sheen. Um, it has not been dyed, but it has been burnished. The belt loop on the back has been blocked for a two inch belt loop. And everything that we've asked of this sheath from the initial pattern is, um, is in play. So we're gonna pass that, uh, we're gonna pass that uh, extended or that swollen welt and it's gonna lock in just like the pattern just described. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that build. I think that if you practice some of the pattern building uh, steps that uh, you can achieve this yourself. So stay tuned for volume seven. I'm gonna show you how to do this scout carry for an EC PR4 spear point knife. It's gonna include the vertical carry as well as an option. And as all of my sheaths, we're gonna have a positive stop lock welt. All right, stay tuned for this one. That'll be coming up here soon, I hope. And um, we look forward to this and we thank you for your support.